Shack, and a whole lot more coming up after your local news, which is next. KDKA-TV News at 11 begins right now. Evening. Bill Burns speaking to you again from Madison Square Garden and the Democratic National Convention in New York. Bill Burns was Pittsburgh. He was one of us. But tonight, the legend is lost. Bill Burns died today at the age of 84. 36 of those years were spent here at KDKA-TV. Bill Burns was a pioneer. His television news career started when this medium was in its infancy, and he set the standard for the rest of us to follow. Ray Tannehill co-anchored the 11 o'clock news with Bill and has this look back at what many of you saw as you grew up and older. This is Bill Burns in the KDKA television newsroom. Bill Burns. His name means news in Pittsburgh. In fact, he practically invented local television news. Bill began his broadcasting career at KQV Radio, and he worked for seven years as a street reporter. He brought that strong work ethic to Pittsburgh's first television news broadcast on Channel 3, WDTV, back in 1953. The United States today announced a project to launch space satellites, satellites that will circle the Earth in the outer atmosphere. For the next 35 and a half years, all of them spent on WDTV and KDKA television, Bill worked the streets of Pittsburgh like a master. He was out in the streets more than he was behind the anchor desk. And you name them, he interviewed them. Well, Mr. President, what do you think of the new Republican administration? No comment. The last king of Yugoslavia, singer Sophie Tucker, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. He is here live and in living color. None other than Tiny Tim. Tiptoe through the tulips with me. Dr. Jonas Salk, politicians of every kind, and an unemployed actor trying to get into politics. Could I ask you this, Mr. Reagan? I noticed that two of your friends are Dick Scaife and Charlie Ford of T. Mellon and Sons. And could it mean that perhaps you're going to meet some of the people here who, uh, money-wise, might be able to help you? Well, now, you're putting a, a I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> you're putting a mercenary tinge on a, on a social visit. Bill Burns was the Walter Cronkite of Pittsburgh. Always there, every noon and every night, to keep us informed. He guided us through tragedy. Did you feel that the plane was going to crash right after you took off? And he helped us through some very turbulent times. Here is a bulletin from the KDKA television newsroom. Dallas, Texas. Shots have been fired at the presidential motorcade. A camera was quickly wheeled into the newsroom. In my shirt sleeves, I reported every scrap of information that came over the teletype. I remained on the air for more than two hours. But whether he was covering peacemakers, popes, or presidents, Bill never forgot one thing, Good evening. his Bill viewers. Speaking to you again. He liked to I take the news Garden to the people of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh to cover the events of the day as it affected their lives. As the keeper of the budget, Mrs. Nelson, what's this strike mean to you? Well, clothing and food and children going back to school. As much of a newsman as he was, Bill also had a knack for publicity and promotion. He raised millions of dollars over the years for Pittsburgh's Children's Hospital. Is Michael William Burns, the newest addition to the Burns family. He's healthy, and we feel fortunate. He sounds just like his father and his Aunt Patty. Well, we feel so fortunate that he's healthy. You sound healthy. And Bill had his opinions. Oh, he had lots of them. And he was never shy about sharing them. I wouldn't mind spending a lot of time getting rid of all the pigeons, not only Market Square, but all over the city. <laughs> Bill never did accomplish that, but he did accomplish many things in his career. He passed on his love of news to his daughter, Patty. Patty and Daddy, as they came to be known, dominated the new news at KDKA for years. Yes, Bill Burns was a true television star, but a humble one. This is his last newscast, January 3rd, 1989. Well. This is the end of the road for me and my broadcasting career. This has been my last newscast. Again, I want to thank you, the viewers, for allowing me to come into your homes for all these years. Without you, I would not have had such a long career. But goodbye, good luck, and good news tomorrow. Well, after being on the air in Pittsburgh here for nearly 40 years, Bill Burns had the most recognizable face in town. 
He sure did. Everybody thought they knew him. Of course, those who knew him best were his family and his friends. Ralph Iannotti is here now with that part of the story. Ralph? Well, Patrice, uh, as you know, Bill Burns retired from the anchor desk here in 1989. His son told me tonight that his father made the most of his retirement years, kept abreast of the news, and until fairly recently did some traveling. He used to spend a lot of time in Florida. But one of the things he always did was it was never more than a week or 10 days. He always wanted to be back in the city. He thought he was going to miss something, really. Mike Burns told me that even after his father's retirement, he still tried to keep on top of the news. He kept up with the news. He kept up with all of his old political cronies, all of his contacts for sure. And uh, he would call his friends in the newsroom on a daily basis to find out what was going on and what he thought was going on. If he wasn't Tambellini's best customer over the years, Bill Burns was certainly one of the best and most regular, and no doubt the most famous one. Okay, go out. And Phyllis Fabio was his usual waitress. He didn't want a lot of anything. He didn't want anything garnished. Uh, he wanted what he wanted, you know? He just didn't want anything extra. He wanted what, the French fries had to be well done. If they weren't well done, Back they go. Fabio says Burns was usually in for dinner. She saw him most recently a couple of weeks ago. He was here at least four days a week, and he always sat at the bar. He did not want to sit in the dining room. She recalled several occasions when Burns had an unusual request. And I asked him what kind of dressing he wanted on his salad, and he says he'll have ketchup. And I says, ketchup? He says, yeah. A couple other times he had a little spaghetti instead of a potato, and he wanted ketchup on his pasta. I grew up with him watching, uh, watching him on TV in the 50s, and, and of course my mother loved him, so, you know, when I, he started coming in here, and uh, I used to say, you know, Mr. Burns, Mr. Burns, and he used to say, no, I don't want Mr. Burns, you call me Bill, you know. Now, Patty is dealing with the loss of her father privately and understandably did not want to talk publicly at this time. Our thoughts are with Patty and the Burns family. Patrice. Oh, absolutely. He will definitely be missed, Ralph. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. And, of course, we will share more memories coming up a little bit later in this newscast. And we should also tell you that a funeral mass will be held tomorrow at St. Mary of Mercy on Stanwick Street downtown. The mass will begin at 1030. And the Burns family is requesting the contributions be sent to either the Western Pennsylvania School for Blind Children or the Cancer Caring Center. And then tomorrow at 6.30, KDK-TV will air a half-hour special in tribute to the legend. Pittsburgh remembers Bill Burns tomorrow at 6.30. Jennifer's an excellent reporter. Uh, when she's out on something live, breaking, uh, there's nobody better. Jennifer's, uh, Jennifer's a great journalist. Ken really cares about what he's doing, and I admire his dedication and his commitment to our newscast. We love Larry. Uh, everybody loves Larry. He, he could have his own sitcom. Everybody loves Larry. I feel lucky to work with these two. I mean, I really do. These two are rare. KDKA TV News at 5 with Ken, Jen, and Larry. That's the hometown advantage. If you see news happening, call 800 TV2 2222 or Star TV2 on your cell phone. So that you can go to these extremes, we've gone to some of our own. Introducing the ultimate Grand Cherokee event. Featuring the best incentives of the year on 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokees, like low 4.8% financing or this remarkable $319 a month lease. But hurry, these incredible incentives end when the 97 Grand Cherokees are gone. So now, more than ever, Grand Cherokee can take you to extremes. See your all-star Jeep and Eagle dealer today. how close you are to one of the country's top trauma programs. Choose a hospital as if your life depended on it. University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Thank you for making KDK-TV the most watched newscast at 11. Patience is a virtue. Stop and smell the roses. Hey, but Oldsmobile's national year-end closeout is right now. You can pick up a well-equipped 88 with six-passenger seating and a long list of standard features for only 23 2 Good things come to those who wait. Wait? And miss out on an additional 1500 cash back or 2.9 financing? Oh, never mind. 
The early bird gets the worm. Right, at Oldsmobile's National Year End Closeout. This 10-piece collection, including two matching bags, free with any 1850 Estee Lauder purchase, exclusively at Kaufman's through September 27th. You're watching KDK TV News at 11. The Hometown Advantage with Patrice King Brown, Stacy Smith, Larry Richard, John Steigerwald, and Bob Pompiani. We have some breaking news tonight. Two Air Force fighter jets have collided off the coast of New Jersey. The pilot of one F-16 landed safely. Two pilots on the other plane were rescued from the ocean. This, by the way, is the fifth military crash since Saturday. And now back at home, a major strike at Three River Stadium. Late today, ushers, ticket sellers, and other stadium workers walked out. So what will this mean for the games? Lynn Carson has live coverage now from over at the stadium. Lynn? Well, Stacey, fans that came here to see the Pirates play were met outside by workers who are usually inside. It's day one of a strike that has the union and management facing off. We'd like to be treated fairly by our management. You know, we feel that they should also be treated fairly. Umpires stepping up to bat for 442 striking stadium workers. Ushers, ticket takers, sellers, and maids working without a contract since February are now working the picket line. How long are you guys prepared to stay on strike? Forever. Not what fans want to hear. I'm in the service industry myself, and I think, you know, they should get what they're asking. If you ask any questions, they're always willing to help you, so. Management says some ushers aren't doing enough. Managers want to decide where ushers work in the stadium for better customer service. The ushers say the place they work has always been determined by seniority, and they don't want that to change. This is not a seniority issue. The union says it's all about seniority. Right now, the only thing these two sides seem to agree on is neither the union nor management is giving in. Now tomorrow starts the big Houston series here. Striking workers say they will be here at these gates with their picket signs, and they are hoping other Teamsters from the stadium will also join them. Back to you. Well, Lynn, how, uh, how are the people seated at tonight's game then? Well, they have things covered somewhat. According to the Pirates, they had people that were in management seating those people. So the, the Pirates say things are, were okay tonight, and they're expecting that things will be okay tomorrow. But tomorrow is expected to be a much bigger game. Stay safe. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Eight hours of deliberations and still no verdict in the murder trial of Vaughn Mathis. Mathis is accused in the deadly shooting of 14-month-old Ryan Hackey. Deliberations will continue in the morning. The future of the Johnny Gamage case is now in the hands of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Attorneys for retired Brentwood Lieutenant Milton Mulholland and Baldwin officer Michael Albert argued the DA unfairly targeted their clients for prosecution. But the DA's office says the case should go forward. Among the people in the courtroom today, representatives of the Pittsburgh NAACP whose view of the defense didn't change by what they heard in court. The judges certainly recognized the tactics of, of, the, uh, of the trial attorneys and that it didn't seem to be something that they were going to buy. No word on when the court will decide if there should be a new trial. The first case ended with a mistrial for Mulholland and Albert. Protesters continued their fight tonight to close an adult nightclub in the Strip District. The Pittsburgh Coalition Against Pornography held a candlelight vigil at Bear Elegance. The Pittsburgh Zoning Board has already voted to revoke the Strip Club's occupancy permit. The club is appealing. Now for the KDPG first look at tomorrow's headlines, an unusual crime in Frick Park. A man pulled a gun on a woman who was walking her dog and ordered her into the woods. The woman thought she was going to be raped, so she asked the suspect why such a good-looking man would do such a thing. The man apologized and walked away. The superintendent of the Red Bank Valley School District is accused of mishandling money from a student activity fund. He is suspended during the investigation. And Dollar Bank is introducing an online banking system with a twist. Customers can access their accounts directly from the Internet. Separate software is needed for most other banks. And, of course, you can read more about these stories in tomorrow's Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Well, we saw some sun today. What about tomorrow? Larry's coming up next with the Accurate Forecast. And then the erotic discovery at TWA. See what should have never been in the cockpit. You paid for it. Do you want to blow the whistle on wasteful government spending? Just call 1-800-TIP-KDKA, the hometown advantage. Next, all new Rosie, it's Oscar winner Jessica Lang. That woman can act. I'm wow. telling you right now. And Penny Marshall. Wow, the energy. Plus, Belinda Carlisle performs. That's all coming your way next Rosie. Wednesday at 4.
In the ever-changing world of technology, rely on a partner that's in the business of providing technology solutions. With nearly 200 information specialists, many from local universities, CDS can solve problems through software development, data center management, and information technology outsourcing services. A CDS specialist will take the responsibility for developing and implementing solutions, taking your business where you want it to go. CDS Technologies, making a difference as your partner in technology and innovation. Okay, imagine you're an orthopedist and you've just opened your own practice. Question is, where is your next new patient? How do you find those people who right now are looking for a fine orthopedist like yourself? Answer, with a very effective ad, an ad that drives business, an ad that runs in a place where people will look when they're looking for you, when they're ready to be your next patient. And the sooner the better. The Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages, where people go to buy, find, or do just about anything. It's Midnight Madness tomorrow at Levin Furniture. We're closed till noon, but then for 12 great hours, get an absolutely fabulous deal. Start by paying absolutely nothing till next year. Then with any purchase you make, get an unbelievable 20% bonus furniture. Buy $500 and get $100 free. Buy $1,000 and get $200. There's no limit. The more you buy, the more you'll save. For 12 hours tomorrow, get 20% bonus furniture. It's the Midnight Madness sale only at Levin Furniture. What if you didn't have to worry about medical coverage when you travel? the AccuWeather Advantage. Pretty nice day and a lovely evening. If you were outside, you know that. A harvest moon overhead. Let's take a look at what you can expect for tomorrow. Now, there is a front approaching from the west racing across the plains, and it's headed our way, and what it's going to bring is the chance. Let's say there's a 50-50 chance of you seeing some showers where you are tomorrow afternoon. Here's the front, and a couple of thunder showers will take probably until afternoon to get here. Our high today, 77. We were above the average for a change. We've had some cool days in September, but it looks like we're going to be above that for the next five days. 53, our low this morning, pretty much where we should be. Partly cloudy at the airport now, 67, our current temperature. Relative humidity is at 81%. The winds are calm, and it looks like we could develop some patches of fog once again for the rush hour tomorrow morning. Barometer is holding steady. Let's show you that rain, and this is in motion. What it is is a national radar picture. The radar picks up the precipitation. We put it into motion over the last few hours, and you can see the movement. Pretty well-defined line, and that's racing ahead of a cold front that's moving in our direction. So what's going to happen is we're going to see the clouds start to build during the day, a couple of showers uh, through the area, and then it will clear rather quickly. So by 6 o'clock tomorrow, watch what happens to that front right on our doorstep. Once that moves through, this is the dry area of high pressure. It'll bring us some nice weather for Thursday, Friday, and most of Saturday as well. Let's take a look at temperatures tomorrow. Near 80 degrees, so 74 being the average or seasonal temperature. You can see we're going to be above average once again. And except for the showers, it's going to get real nice again for the end of the week. So to recap the AccuWeather forecast, moonlit tonight with some areas of fog developing, a comfortable overnight low, of 60 degrees, then some patches of fog for the morning rush. It'll warm up slowly to about 62 degrees. And then the lunch hour in the mid-70s, and the clouds start to billow in. And then we have a chance, again, about a 50-50 chance, depending on where you are, of picking up some showers for the rush and a high of 80 degrees. On Thursday, it starts to clear out and warm up again. Mid-70s sunshine into Friday, a mostly sunny day, great for Friday night football. And Saturday, 78, clouds start to move in later in the day. That brings us a chance of a shower on Sunday with a temperature of 76 degrees. That's the AccuWeather forecast. And some special notes from some special teachers who were honored tonight for their outstanding work in the classroom. Katie Gay hosted the reception for the 1997 Thanks to Teachers, Honorees, and Finalists. It was all held at the Lamont. And Katie Gay's Elizabeth Johnson served as MC for the evening. Congratulations to all the teachers for their hard work and dedication, with whom nothing would be possible, really.
I had right. some great teachers. Speaking of school, yes. Yes. now normally when the weather person talks about school, it's a cancellation because right. of snow, but Quaker Valley High School is canceled again tomorrow. As we mentioned last night, mm -hmm. they have some uh, permit problems for the high school, mm -hmm. so they're hoping to open it on Thursday. Make sure you stay tuned for details. Well, that's Quaker Valley High School. Only the high school. Only the high school. Okay, so they'll be closed again tomorrow. Okay. Okay, well, thanks, Larry. Kind of makes you wish you were back at Quaker Valley <laughs> High School or something. <laughs> something you know, like day that. Off. Yeah. yeah. Well, Princess Diana's bodyguard is now awake and conscious. Details just ahead. And then if you have had it with potholes, you are not alone. A report on our roads is coming up. What's the hometown sports advantage? We are. We went to high school here. We know the rivalry. We know the history. And we'll give it to you straight. No hype, no nonsense. And you'll get more scores from the KDPG scoreboard than anywhere else. Count on it. That's the hometown sports advantage. High school football Friday on KDK TV News at 11. Dear BP, what if you had special trucks that could turn into gas stations? Then we could buy what we need and get to where we're going a lot faster. Signed, Dan. Dear Dan, we keep people moving with pay at the pump and our fast BP Express stores. P.S. We've sent your letter to engineering. Get a BP Super Soccer Ball for just $6.49 with 8 pounds of BP Super 93. Pick up a Bell South bedside telephone at a great price. The more you shop, the more you save at Shop and Save. Welcome to the Nissan store. Don't you wish every time you went to your favorite restaurant, the whole menu was on special? At your local Nissan store, it is. Everyone's raving over our newest addition, the 1998 Ultima. But there's plenty more to choose from. Hey, right now you can get up to $1,500 in factor to retailer incentives on any new 97 Maxima. Reservations aren't required at Nissan's model year and event, but the specials end September 30th. Now, the Tri-State's winning lottery numbers. We hope you're a winner. Be sure to watch the live drawing of the Pennsylvania Lottery every night right after KDK TV News at 6. Cellular companies charge you for roaming. They charge you for landline connections. And by rounding all calls up to the next minute, they charge you even more. It's a wonder they don't charge you for smelling salts. Get smart. Get Nextel, the national all-digital wireless network. The lone survivor of the crash that killed Princess Diana is now conscious. Doctors say Trevor Reese Jones can communicate well, although he tires easily. Investigators are hoping Reese Jones will be able to tell them what caused the car to swerve out of control in a Paris tunnel. Doctors will not say if Reese Jones has talked about the crash yet. And making news across the nation tonight, a secret reveal from the cockpit of a major airline. An investigation at TWA turned up pornographic pictures in cockpit manuals. They were taped over important information. The FAA ordered the airline to get rid of the pictures two years ago, but some have resurfaced. A new report card on the state of America's roads gives them a failing grade. The study shows more than a quarter of the nation's urban highways are in need of serious patching up. A train derailment in New York left 36 cars stacked on top of each other. The derailment severed power lines and closed a busy stretch of road. There were no injuries. The son of Sam Shepard wants to clear his father's name. He'll have his father's body exhumed tomorrow to try to prove that Shepard did not kill his wife 43 years ago. In Washington, D.C., the mold for what is considered one of America's greatest tributes to the Civil War was unveiled. The statue pays homage to the first African Americans to fight for our country. And that is the latest from across the nation tonight. The exhibit at the National Gallery of Art will be open to the public starting this Sunday. Get ready for the hometown sports advantage. 
Well, the stage is set for a big Central Division showdown for the Pirates and the Astros beginning tomorrow night. Three and a half games still separate the two after both teams cruised easy wins tonight. And the Pirates needed a laugher instead of all those tense one-run games. And they saw, for the second time this season, Pirates hit three home runs in one inning. Al Martin got it started here, a two-run shot. He had four RBIs on the night, and it's a 3-0 lead for John Lieber. Next batter, Kevin Young. And how about back-to-back -back home runs? Yes. Just like last night, Young continues to impact the Pirates. His 18th and second in two games, it's 4-0. Later in the same inning, Sean Dunstan, another rocket shot off the rookie Mike Johnson. Pirates liked him on the mound. It was 5-0 Pirates. They also had lots of nice defensive plays in this one. Young's presence in the lineup cannot be underestimated. Look at this great defensive play. He is as complete a first baseman as the Pirates have had in a while. And it was contagious, too. Sean Dunstan at short, robbing. The Expos of a hit right there. Then the proverbial icing on the cake. Pinch hitter Mark Smith with another Pirate home run. Good to see those bats going here as the Astros come to town. Two-round shot, 8-2 Pirates win, and everyone's talking about the young factor. Kevin's, to me, is a uh, almost, if he'd had more time at first base, I think it'd surely be close to a gold glove first baseman. You know, I'm sure you, if they get the balance, you might not get any votes. But if you see him every night, uh, the way that we've seen him play first base, I think he'd, he'd surely be considered. Kevin just helps being in the lineup. Uh, uh, you take his bat out of the lineup and, and you just look at his defense. Uh, he saves your runs in every way. Uh, it's just good having him back. Houston also had a nice offensive day. 15-3, they beat San Diego. Atlanta won 6-4. Philadelphia tonight won 3-2. The big story there, Kurt Schilling, only the 13th pitcher since 1900 to strike out 300 batters in one season. St. Louis and Los Angeles, 7-6. Dodgers uh, lead this one in the ninth inning. And how about Mark McGuire? Check out what he did today. Number 52, and look, this hits the scoreboard. Almost hits his name on the scoreboard. And he is now nine behind Roger Maris's record, just like Griffey. And... Uh, 517 feet for that home run. And that 50-second home run happened tonight. Before that, earlier today, McGuire got a new contract to stay with the Cardinals for the next three years. He's going to get $28 million over that time. But the best thing about the deal is that McGuire is going to donate $1 million a season to establish a foundation to benefit sexually and physically abused children. It's a, a time in my life that uh, I want to help them out. So. I will do everything in my power just to start my foundation to help them out. And you like to see guys like that do well. Congratulations to him. The Penguins play the home end of a home and home series with the Stanley Cup champs tonight at the Civic Arena. Penguins are going to have a young team. Check out how young here. Look at them. They're getting smaller and smaller by the year. Actually, that's the Pee Wee Penguins on the ice tonight. Uh, how about the first goal on the power play? Penguins set it up here. Sven Butishan sets up Roman Oksuda, who deflects it in. One zip. Hit of the night. Look at this. The inspired Rusty Fitzgerald flattens this member of the Red Wings. That's the hit of the night. And Fitzgerald was also putting the puck in the net. Takes the feed from Dave Rose. She shoots and scores. Penguins win tonight 2-0. They play in Detroit tomorrow. And finally, we haven't seen many one-punch knockouts in boxing recently, but we saw one in an NHL preseason game. Watch this. Leafs and Rangers here. Ryan Vandenbush of Toronto. Nick Kiprios of the Rangers. Look the left hand here by the guy in the white. He's going to hit Kiprios with a left hand coming up right. There. And he hits him. He's down. He was unconscious immediately. Good news is today that Kiprios is okay. It is good. And it looked worse than it actually was. How about this? One quick note. The USA Today has named the Pittsburgh Pirates the Organization of the Year. Oh, in sports, nice. last year this went to the uh, Atlanta Braves. Well, they so deserve it. They yes, did a great they job. Do. And how about Kevin Young, who nearly didn't make the team again this year? Yeah, well, he'll be here next year with I some big money, I think. Absolutely. Good Thanks, Paul. All right. A tribute to Bill Burns coming up next. It's the only local appearance of some of the greatest golfers of all time, the Hidden Valley Legends of Golf, September 22nd. Tickets are $10. Call for details. I'd probably pay upwards of 450 or so. What would you pay for an RV sub? $6.95. Would you believe any two subs for just four bucks? Nah. <laughs> no, no way. For this much meat in a sub, I would have expected to be a lot more. Honest, any two for just four bucks. For all that you get in this sandwich, that is a great price. Oh. Hopefully everybody else out of business. <laughs> Now Arby's Meteor Subs are two for just four bucks. And don't forget to try Arby's Homestyle Fries. 
Have any questions about your prescriptions or over-the-counter medications? Giant Eagle Pharmacists will be on hand to answer all your medical questions. Phone the Giant Eagle Pharmacist Day Wednesday from 3 to 8 here on KDKA TV 2. To create the kitchen or bath of your dreams, you'll probably go to a place like this for beautifully crafted cabinetry. A place like this for an outstanding selection of floors. A place like this for a distinctive array of wall coverings. Or a place like Petite Kitchen and Bath Design Center. The place for everything you just saw. Come to Petite Kitchen and Bath Design Center where you'll get it all. Custom creation to installation and everything in between. It's a really simple rule. When it comes to communicating, the clearer, the better. Sprint PCS. Wireless service with 100% digital clarity and less background noise. It's the clear alternative to cellular. Something from out of this world is about to hit Pittsburgh like no other sale in the world. Harvest Sale at Lazarus. What would you expect to pay for an Arby's sub? $6.95. Would you believe any two subs for just four bucks? No, no way. Honest, any two for four bucks. We have been remembering Bill Burns tonight. He passed away earlier today. And we know many of you have special memories of Bill Burns. Ken Rice listened in to Fred Hansberger's show on KDK Radio. All of us here at KDK are mourning the loss of Bill Burns this morning, that 11 o'clock this morning. There was a call from one man who remembered how much his aunt admired Bill Burns and even called him up one night to tell him how much she liked his neckties. And told him that she wished she could have ties like this for her son-in-law for Christmas. And this man took her charge card number, went to Horns and bought ties for her and had them delivered. I mean, that's not a surprising story. Because I mean, that's just what a wonderful guy he was. Yeah, and I think what makes um, a broadcaster a legend, especially a local broadcaster a legend, is someone who does relate to his audience. With me here on the field is Danny Murtaugh, the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Danny, what do you think of the brand new house? Bill, uh, he was he was his own man. Others remembered what a wonderful journalist he was. Irreverent, objective, dedicated. He was a hard-nosed man, but uh, he was a good guy. Well, he was a good guy, and certainly a legend now in Pittsburgh broadcasting. Stay tuned for the late movie, It's a Goody, the tomato that ate McKee's rocks. This is Bill Burns wishing you good night, good luck, and good news tomorrow. A reminder for you that tomorrow night at 6.30, KDK-TV will air a half-hour special in tribute to Bill Burns. Pittsburgh remembers a legend tomorrow at 6.30. We are all going to miss him. Oh, we absolutely are. He did set the standard. That is the news for now. The Late Show with David Letterman is coming up next. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Have a good night and hope you'll join us tomorrow.